Yeah, hi there. These comments are for um, Savvy. This is Michael. I am the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at Stealth, the seven-step system to pass the TOEFL IBT, and you wanted me uh, to video correct your independent essay number two, so you have paid to have this additional service, and that's exactly uh, what I'm going to do right now. Now, based on my notes, it looks like my teaching assistant gave you a score of 3.25 out of 5. So let's take a look at what you can do to get better. Okay, in the beginning, for the very first sentence, I'm going to change it to this. Your writing is a little bit wordy here. We'll, we'll probably do something like this. In each country, we will say different dances and right now you're at 371 words, different dances and you have they here, you obviously you want to change this to there. In each country, different dances have their own significant cultural value. Okay, that's probably going to make that a lot less wordy than it is. I've said the same thing that what, what you said. It took you almost two complete lines to say. I've done this in a lot fewer words. Okay, let's go to the next one. Like... Okay, we'll probably say this. For example, if you capitalize this one, the Bhatha Tadaramayama dance in India. I think I think you're saying that the the Indian dance and the disco dance and the ballroom dance, the pair dance and ballet dance all represent different aspects of culture, right? So let's how about let's change it. Instead of saying is a sign of culture, let's say all the dances represent signs of culture. the disco dance in Western culture, the ballroom dance in Africa, the pear dance, and the ballet dance represent, how about, unique cultural elements. I think we do something like that. Now the ballet dance I think in is was uh, invented in France I think. The pear dance, I don't know where it is, I'm just gonna say Italy. But if you start off talking about India, Western culture, Africa, you should probably continue discussing where each dance comes from because that's what you did in the beginning, right? Okay, then we get to the next sentence. In ancient days, people used to communicate in the form of dance. And I'm gonna have, I'm gonna again make this expressing The emotion of oneness
exercise to the body. Dance plays an important role in culture for very important reasons. Don't really need that. There we go. Okay, let's make sure we have it right. What I did is I took your two key points, the two, the two basic reasons that you want to argue that dance is important. I put them as, as present participles which precede the subject of your sentence. So I say, expressing the emotion of oneness and providing good exercise to the body, uh, dance plays an important role in a culture. Now remember, as we look at this, this is my edited version of what you wrote. Now let's go back to the question. We want to make sure that we're... So do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Dance plays an important role in the culture. And uh, I like how your thesis, I mean, you are restating the question, which is important, because that connects what you're doing back to the, the writing task. Okay, let's take a look at that introduction one more time. We have, in each country, different dances have their own significant cultural value. For example, the uh, Bharatanatyama dance in India, the disco dance in Western culture, the pair dance in Italy and the ballet dance in Europe represent unique cultural elements. In ancient days, people used to communicate in the form of dance. Expressing the emotion of oneness and providing good exercise to the body, dance plays an important role in a culture. And there is our thesis. All right, let's take a look at your second paragraph. You have uh, first, one can dance to express their feeling and the emotion without communication. Now you have one which is singular, you have there which is uh, plural there, so that's kind of a, a problem with agreement. But what if you said this and get rid of one and say dance can be used to express feeling and emotion without communicate without communication for instance from my childhood i'd started learning ballet dance I'm going to, so I'll probably say, creating a compound sentence, you can use shorter sentences when you need to, but you don't always need to, so what I'm trying to do is give you an idea of how to change up your sentence style just a little bit. So we said, it took me, it took me, I don't think completely fits in that sentence, to be honest with you. You can probably just say it took me five years to become a master. You probably want to say something like this later on to help kind of uh, use that later on to move the story forward, you know, beyond what you were just talking about. So later on, which means after you became a master during my college, you can probably just say during college, I had a crush on my classmate. I even put a comma here. 
you can use but in the beginning of your sentence, it, but it makes it a lot less formal, makes it informal. But for your TOEFL writing, you probably want to be a little, a little more formal than that. So then we'll say that. So later on during college, I had a crush on my classmate, but I was so scared to express my love. One day, my friend gave me an idea that this is where you're running into some sentence structure issues. If you put that, that's what's called a noun clause connector. It introduces college, university, is, so you can't really um, put a comma after the word that. And your verb tenses here are in the past. So one day my friend gave me an idea that... College, university is the same thing. I'm going to just say university was conducting a dance competition. And then put, and maybe, and that she asked me to enroll. You don't say enroll to you typically say enroll in, to enroll in the dance comp competition. Maybe. Maybe like that. Okay, now I think we got it. Now, I, I had to do quite a bit of repairing in this particular sentence. This is going to cause you uh, a lot of problems because you're having some problems with sentence formation. And that will cause your score to go down. So let me look at it again, make sure we have it. You say, one day my friend gave me an idea that the university was conducting a dance competition. Maybe as, I think it's going to be better to say, consequently, She asked me to enroll in the... We already said dance competition there. Asked me to enroll so that I could express my love toward my classmate. Okay, now we get to the next one. So accepting her idea, I enrolled in the competition. You might say something like, but instead of
There, I think we have it. In a dance, Okay, let's see, so which made me Let's go back to what you said at the beginning. You, you said it's uh, without communicating, right? But you can express feelings and emotions. So you're making sure that you prove that idea in this particular paragraph, so which made it Let's go back, let me keep reading here. So accepting her idea, I enrolled in the competition, but instead of telling him directly of my enamored feelings toward him, I expressed my emotions in a dance, which made it easier to communicate. And he accepted my love. As you can see, dance is one form to express emotions and feelings. All right, let's take a word count here. I've been getting rid of things. I've been adding a few things. Let's see where we are with our word count. You're in pretty good shape with that. I don't, yeah, 377, you're perfect. So you, you can bring up, if you want, um, Savvy, you can bring up three different reasons why dance is important, but if you bring up two like you're doing and you give a lot of good examples in there to help support your ideas, I think that's going to be sufficient also. Okay, let's go to your next paragraph. You say, finally, some people are passion. I think you want to use the adjective here, not the noun. Some people are passionate about dancing. You had the idea, your, your key point in your thesis is a good exercise to the body. Then you're saying they just dance to be fit. Fit means conditioning and it implies exercise. So I guess that ties, it's a restatement of what you said in your key point, uh, but not exactly the same words. That's actually a pretty good strategy. That, that demonstrates good vocabulary. We have some people are passionate about dancing. They just dance to be fit. What if we did this? I think you. we need to combine those two sentences because you're using two short, simple sentences, which I don't think are really needed. You can maybe say some people passionate about dancing just dance to be fit. For example... One of my friends, yeah, I think you can demonstrate a little bit better grammar here, and you're having what's called a run-on sentence here. What if you took the word who? You have uh, one of my friends whose passion is dancing. Let 
I'm using dance from childhood, since childhood, as a form of exercise. I think that's going to work a little bit better. Let's look at that again. So, some people, maybe no commas are needed there, some people passionate about dancing just dance to be fit. For example, one of my friends whose passion is dancing has been using dance since childhood as a form of exercise. So I'm using has been using present perfect progressive. I change the word from to since and then we have as a form of exercise. How about now let's use the word in fact to emphasize the example you're using. In fact, she started learning from childhood towards she is new of, this is killing you right here. This is absolutely killing your, your sentence structure. I can repair it, but just follow, follow what I'm doing very closely here. So in fact, she started learning from childhood until she knew all kinds of dances. If I visit her place, her room is filled with Ornaments, different types of costumes, head masks, bangles. How about jewelries? And so on. Good vocabulary there. How about this? You have thought, you want to say though, even though she... is perfect in dancing till today use the uh, make sure you put your s on there and you're using what's called the simple present to talk about a habitual or regularly occurring action which is occurring over and over. So you say, even though she is perfect in dancing, she dances for an hour without fail. The problem here is, is we have to go back to this idea. You're not doing a great job in this paragraph illustrating the point you're trying to make. You're trying to say that dancing is a good form of exercise. But so far, you have your second, your third, your fourth lines. You're, you're talking about dancing, but you're not saying how it is a good form of exercise. But you do say that when you get down to right here, she dances to keep herself healthy. You might say, Again, you're putting a comma after that. If you put a comma anywhere, it might be before that, but you don't even need that. This is a noun clause. So when I asked her why she danced so much, she told me that she danced to keep herself healthy. You might want to say,
this might work a little better, especially given the fact that her mom had past perfect, had been diagnosed by cancer. Now, who is she here? Is this um, is this the mother, or is this your friend? I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and say your friend. We need to be clear. Sometimes when you when you're using a lot of pronouns, especially when you start bringing in different different uh, people into the paragraph. You want to make sure it's very clear at what the pronouns refer to. Let's read the paragraph again. It says, finally, some people passionate about dancing just dance to be fit. For example, one of my friends whose passion is dancing has been using dance since childhood as a form of exercise. In fact, she started learning from childhood until she knew all kinds of dances. If I visit her place, her room is filled with ornaments, different types of costumes, head masks, bangles, jewelries, and so on, and that is great vocabulary. Even though she's perfect in dancing, she dances for an hour, how about each day, without fail. When I asked her why she danced so much, she told me that she danced to keep herself healthy, especially given the fact that her mom had been diagnosed, diagnosed by cancer. How about use another transition word here? Therefore, My friend believes that dancing is the best exercise to keep herself fit and maybe by preventing See, I'm going to put that in there because that ties to the previous sentence. Today she is in her 50s, leading a very healthy life. Okay, I think we have it. As a result, and let's get back to your final paragraph. This is your conclusion where you kind of restate everything. Okay, in your conclusion, as a result, dancing is a gift of God. Very one cannot dance. You're missing some words in there. That's not a good not a good thing. You don't want to miss anything here. Dancing is a gift from God. But not everyone can learn to dance easily. It needs a lot of hard work and dedication. I'm going to say accomplish, I'm going to say to master the art. Definitely.
dancing plays. Now you can say I believe that dancing plays, but it's a little bit wordy, it's not needed because we already know you're making the argument and in, in academic writing you're trying to be as concise as you can. You say definitely dancing plays an important role in a culture. Let's say because here, I think the cause effect is going to work better because it helps in expressing one's emotion comma and at the same time it helps in leading a healthy life Okay, I think we're getting there. So when I, when I look at through the essay, the good news is, I mean, you, you definitely have a very good command, I think, in terms of how you're organizing your ideas, and you have some good examples in there to help support what you're trying to write. So I think you've expressed a good argument. However, it is those sentence formation issues, uh, Savvy. That's exactly why my TA gave you the score that he did. You had too many problems with your sentence formation and also your verb tenses, as you can see by some of the editing suggestions that I made in the essay. All right, let's take a look at the essay one more time from the top. In each country, different dances have their own significant cultural value. For example, the Bhatranayama dance in India, the disco dance in Western culture, the ball dance, the ballroom dance in Africa, the pear dance in Italy, and the ballet dance in France represent unique cultural elements. Now, the pear dance in Italy, I have no idea if it's from Italy, but I just kind of followed your lead. India, Western culture, Africa, Italy, France, and so on. In ancient days, people used to communicate in the form of dance. Expressing the emotion of oneness and providing good exercise to the body, dance plays an important role in the culture. First, dance can be used to express feeling and emotion without communication. For instance, from my childhood, I started learning ballet dance and it took me five years to become a master. Later on during college, I had a crush on my roommate, but I was so scared to express my love. I'm going to change this to two, make it a little more negative. I was too scared to express my love. One day, my friend gave me an idea that the university was conducting a dance competition. Consequently, she asked me to enroll so that I could express my love toward my classmate. Accepting her idea, I enrolled in the competition, but instead of telling him directly of my enamored feelings toward him, I expressed my emotions in a dance, which made it easier to communicate, and he accepted my love. As you can see, dance is one form to... Ex I'm going to say here way maybe works better. It's one way to express emotions and feelings. You know, I'm going to get rid of the without communicating thing because we just showed how you can communicate by using dance. That kind of makes that first sentence a little bit obsolete. Okay, our next paragraph. You say, finally, some people passionate about dancing just dance to be fit. For example, one of my friends whose passion is dancing has been using dance since childhood as a form of exercise. In fact... She started learning from childhood until she learned all kinds of dances. If I visit her place, her room is filled with ornaments, different types of costumes, head masks, bangles, jewelries, and so on. Even though she is perfect in dancing, she dances for an hour each day without fail. When I asked her why she danced so much, she told me that she danced to keep herself healthy, especially given the fact that her mom had been diagnosed with cancer. Therefore, my friend believes that dancing is the best exercise to keep herself fit, 
by preventing a de de deadwood diseases like cancer. Today, uh, she's in her 50s leading a very healthy life. That was a good example there. You say, as a result, dancing is a gift of God, but not everyone can learn to dance easily. It needs a lot of hard work and dedication to master the art. Definitely, dancing plays an important role in the culture because it helps in expressing one's emotion and at the same time it helps in leading a normal, healthy life. Okay, so let's go back to what you wrote. Okay, with what you wrote, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with what my TA said. Your score is 3.25 out of five and I think that's probably pretty accurate uh, based on what you did and that's really because of mostly sentence formation issues and word choice issues I'm gonna say the edited version will score Maybe not exactly five out of five. You could probably develop ideas a little bit better, but I'm, I'm going to say it's pretty close. So what I would recommend uh, with my website, uh, grammar lesson number two, number three, and number seven. I think that you can benefit by studying those three specific lessons, uh, Savvy, and in grammar lesson number seven, remember, that's going to take you to a website. And when you get there, there's a lot of different things you can do, but I would really pay attention to the areas of the, of the website that talk about sentence style or sentence structure, something long that has to do with this sentence. This is where you're struggling a little bit. Now, in other cases, in the essay, as you can see, you weren't using, I think, enough transition words to connect your different ideas together. So what is it? Speaking. Lesson number seven. Speaking lesson number seven, I think, is also important for you. It, it's for speaking and writing together, but it, it tells you how to make your speaking and writing more coherent. I would definitely take a look at that as that particular uh, lesson as well. That's going to give you some really good ideas on how to better organize uh, your writing. All right, so we're done. So anyway, thank you for uh, uh, sending me your essay to have me video correct it. I hope by going through the video, I was able to point out some of the ideas uh, some of the problems that you're having with the essay, especially as it relates to editing. So what you can do now is to compare. You can compare the two essays and see the kinds of changes I made to the essay so that it can score higher uh, on the TOEFL IBT exam.